Let's take a look at Ray Holman's design. Starting with these gloves, I mean, it just tells you everything you need to know. Series 13 has been challenging. And it's interesting now that he's in charge of creating a look for all the aliens as well. It's interesting seeing that sort of like unity of design there. It's been hard. He's really open to any ideas that you have. That's the great thing. This is a kind of collaborative process. But it's also been really rewarding. When I saw it, I was just like, bam, that's the character. And once that costume's on, it's done 90% of the work for me because it looks so amazing. Before the series started, I knew that I was going to redesign the Sontarans. Chris and I had a telephone conversation about how they were characterised. We basically called them dirty, filthy Sontarans, so warrior Sontarans. Breathe in the rotting stench of our vanquished foes. Back to killing people and being just generally very nasty. Suntar! Ha! Suntar! It's a fantastic sort of design. The costume is, is, is great in all its permutations. And it's also nice how they're in the Crimea. It's got that kind of really um, distressed, battle-hardened bits of like rusty bit of mud. It looks quite battle-ready. <laughs> It's preserved some of the original um, Sontarans from this year, from the Time Warrior, from the Sontaran experiment, but now it's got an extra layer of armour. Basically, had a little look at the classic era of Sontarans and kind of referenced a few little bits and pieces, but one of the things I wanted to do with these was I wanted armour built into their costumes rather than clipped around their bodies. That fed into the design. Yeah, it's, it's really it's really beefed up. Got, got kind of like a battle sporran uh, attached there, this kind of like, you know, sort of techno kilt, which is fantastic. It's also really interesting how parts of it are a, a cloth. It's sort of breathable and it's movable. But actually, quite easy to wear and quite quick to put on. So underneath the outer layer, there's an under layer. We zip it up at the back and it's a huge muscle suit. And then the dome fits on top. The classic thing is how much you can move the arms. Because you know, with, the, with the big beefy shoulders, being beefy is one thing, but then actually being able to move your limbs in any way is kind of important too. So it's, 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 always, it's always a process of trial and error and working out what the ergonomics of a costume like that is. Ray's fantastic. He's done another sort of cracking job. <laughs> Swarm. He's a really nasty character. I wanted him to feel quite embellished. A bit of pussy bow and a bit of Harry Styles. We worked out what style of suit we wanted and that style of suit was based on a very fashionable kind of dandy and built the suit in the workroom with the weird shoulders and the, the trousers basically come up to here and then took ages to embellish it. I like cross-gendering things or making things non-binary. But also it's about trying to incorporate a playfulness. Don't worry, I'm getting to you. He's in a South American dance kind of suit, if you like. Does the doctor know you're out this late by yourself? With big Cuban heels, so it has that kind of South American flair. It's a very playful and interesting silhouette. You underestimated us, you pathetic temporal hags. So I wanted the fabric to be quite luxurious. So the black fabric is an Armani fabric and knew that I had to embellish it. And so I bought different types of bridal fabrics. So the edges are the gold embroidered with pearls and precious stones built into it. Come. His shirt is actually prints of um, mushrooms. And I think that provides a kind of... Hello again, Doctor. ..an otherworldly but fundamental physical feel to the character, which I think is a nice touch. <laughs> we photographed a mushroom. We got the mushroom printed onto some silk organza, and then we made the shirts. I definitely wanted uniqueness to it. Our final fight has begun. I think as an actor, you're looking for help from anything. Yeah, the costume gives you a kind of, you know, just being on raised heels makes you do stuff that you wouldn't do normally. I remember this. The outfits that we're wearing are kind of couture. They are handmade, hand-sewn. I'll lead. 
each one of the kind of Swarovski crystals that are on our gloves and our boots, uh, hand glued, hand set. I mean, he is a workaholic. It's great. It's great to put on such an amazing piece. Identify! I am Azure, and I am your death. Azure's outfit is just as. In fact, her outfit is even more bejeweled. Again, her silhouette and her, the style of the big collar. We basically did loads of searches through kind of futuristic fashion and kind of chose little bits and pieces. And I was determined to have that big dramatic collar which would frame her prosthetic head. And he's even managed to put in a little silver line around the edge of the jacket, which gives it really kind of like a real sci-fi vibe. And we've got matching crystals on our gloves and on our heads and on our feet. So it's, the attention to detail is impeccable. It's brilliant. I'm a seal. This is Swarm. We bought absolutely tons of jewels and got them out to um, a lovely costume maker who literally was up half the night for a whole week sewing them on. Buttons, I think, what's on the costume. They're vintage, so they're about 100 years old. Can't remember how many are there. They're about six or seven. And that's all there are. So that's a bit of a risk. If suddenly they say, you need another as your costume, you kind of, oh, please don't. Try to rescue them and we'll reduce them to ash. The nice thing about her design was that her trousers were three quarter length. And so I really did want a kind of a cowboy boot coming up, coming up her leg. We kind of discussed um, little bits and bobs, but to be honest, Ray is so brilliant. I mean, you wouldn't want to charge in and want to change his designs. He kind of like sent us all of his drawings. I mean, see something come together from a drawing to an actual, to be on, on a mannequin is, is incredible. So when I saw it, I was just like, bam, that's the character. Thank you all for being here. His is more of a traditional male suited drape. So his drape is softer because I was going for the whole cross-gendered thing. But I wanted her to feel quite powerful. And so hers is stiffer in a way. Tell everyone who arrives here, they're safe with us. Oh, the, the costume um, really, really helps when you put the whole shebang on, it's absolutely um, uh, amazing. It's, it's what locks it in for us, for sure. The beginning of Carvanista, it was during the first lockdown when I, we were, I was talking to Chris. He said, was, well, I want a cockapoo Japanese warrior creature. So, right, OK. <laughs> Yes, gaze upon my might. So Carvanista's costume is sort of like a, like a, almost like an ancient Mongolian warrior, warlord. Kneel before the might of the Lupari. You'll pay for that though, you know. Sort of metal plated armor. Um, and there's lots of animal fur and sort of big, what looks like metal shin protectors, some material as well. And then he's got this brilliant sort of big, um, Again, a sort of Mongolian warlord hat, which is big round with a, with a big ponytail that comes off the top of it, and a, and a big bit to keep him concealed when we first meet him. Be silent, or face execution at the hands of Calvinista, vanquisher of the thousand civilizations. Submit or die. We decided that it would be better not to go completely Japanese because obviously we're science fiction and we don't want to be copying traditional armor basically he's a mixture of um japanese armor and mongolian armor and especially you can see in the helmet with the with the horse's tail flourish and the shape of the helmet the other cool thing i've got i've got, I've got an axe which has been designed which you can sort of you can operate so it sort of flashes open and, and then and flashes and yeah that, that's pretty brilliant as well to begin with we were going to do double swords I think David came up, the production designer, came up with the idea of the axe. That was even better. Obviously, he can't have fingers because he's a dog. So he has his, he has his paws, which meant that the axe worked much better. 
again, it's, it's super impressive. And once that's on, and once you've obviously got all the prosthetics on and that costume on, it's sort of, it's done 90% of the work for me because it looks so amazing, you know? It's, um, no, it's a real joy. You're welcome, idiot. I wanted it to be fun and the teal colour with the red laces that, that join it up in the same way that a Chinese or a Japanese or Mongolian armour does felt like a really good, colourful uh, beginning to our series so that he was like, wow, you know, there in Liverpool in Dan's house. Never talk of my mother. <sighs> You have two tasks as guardian of the Grand Serpent. Protect me and record the meeting so there's no misunderstandings later. When we first meet the Grand Serpent, he is a kind of dictator. I wanted to keep him very, very straightforward and simple. What did you say? Let's take a look at Ray Holman's design with these, starting with these gloves, I mean, it just tells you everything you need to know about what type of person this is. Live dot. Be ready. We did a lot of research and we found quite brilliant images of suits with snakes on them. So I got a couple of those and we worked out what that we would put a snake up and down the jacket if you can look at the design of the serpent jacket here and can we just take a moment check those boots out yeah cuban heels not great to run in but they do look fantastic i was i was gonna do his collar up and stuff and give him a tie but craig said no i quite like the idea of seeing a little bit of vest and a gold chain so he really buys into the snake thing and little details like this is why Ray is such a genius. Little serpent cufflinks. See? It's all in the detail. And he's just done a remarkable job. They need to have an accident. And those are my final conditions. Series 13 has been challenging, uh, but it's also been really rewarding. Even though it's been challenging because of the pandemic, we've had wonderful actors, we've had great fun, and me and my team have managed to put a lot of costume craft onto screen because we've worked so safely and so diligently. It's been hard, but it's been great fun. Don't forget to click below and subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel.